Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus and my special guest Space Kitty. So I want to talk about something that I've been thinking about for a while and uh, it seems like very very few people are actually mentioning this and I think it's kind of important. Uh, so the topic for today is TSMC, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. Now uh, TSMC is a company that makes microchips and they are, uh, in terms of market cap, they're like three times, almost three times larger than Intel. Uh, they're obviously based in Taiwan. Um, I believe they just had a record quarter. Uh, they made, uh, last year they made 53 billion US dollars in revenue. Just had a record quarter. And um, this is a company that builds chips for AMD, Apple, ARM, Broadcom, Qualcomm, Marvell, MediaTek, NVIDIA and probably just about anyone else uh, that you've heard of. Now, okay, so many of the chips that we use and the products that we have, they're designed in the West, but they're actually built uh, in the East. They're built uh, in many cases by TSMC. So uh, we're talking about chips in PCs, laptops, smartphones, Internet of Things, gizmos, which there aren't very many of, uh, even things like cars, washing, machine, washing machines, military tech, like everything. These guys make chips for it. So, okay, first of all, it's kind of important to understand exactly what this company does because, you know, you hear about like the Apple M1 processor and you go, ooh, it's like, you know, American ingenuity. Well, yes and no, because the chip itself is designed at Apple headquarters, let's say. But in order to actually manufacture that chip, uh, there's another company like TSMC that has to do it. So how do, what is this all about? So this is a picture of a, uh, a wafer. And companies like TSMC, they, they make uh, silicon semiconductor wafers that consist of multiple layers. And as you can see in this picture, uh, when you look at a wafer with a bunch of microchips on it, um, due to uh, refraction, and reflection they look like these little rainbow colored cool things so if you zoom in on a single one of these chips uh, what you'll see is something like this where you see these little teeny tiny traces and when we talk about a company that does lithography uh, it, it's kind of complicated but it's basically uh, printing multiple layers of these little tiny circuit traces uh, in semiconductor materials and if you zoom in even further, you can see it's kind of like 3D layers. And when you have multiple layers of semiconductors, you get things like a transistor, which is a basic switch. It has basically one input that turns it on and off, and then two other connections. So it's basically like a light switch. It's either on or off. Hence, you get binary, ones and zeros. And when you take many of these uh, uh, transistors made with this lithography process and you put them together, you get a logic gate and or not whatever put multiple logic gates together, each of which consists of multiple transistors, and boom, you have part of a microprocessor that does things like addition or subtraction or multiplication or store data in registers or move data from point A to point B, and voila, you have a microprocessor that allows you to watch this video, for example. So this is what TSMC actually does. They, they are the ones who manufacture these uh, microchips. Now, um, it's worth noting that the most advanced lithography process right now is basically TSMC's 5 nanometer process. Now, I just showed the picture of the traces uh, uh, on the surface of a microchip. Those traces have a certain width, so when you hear somebody say like 5 nanometer or 10 nanometer, what they're referring to is the thickness of those traces. Now, the thinner they are, uh, the more components you can pack onto a chip, like you might hear, you know, such and such a processor has so many billions of transistors. Well, the, the smaller the lithography process, uh, generally speaking, the f sort of the faster the processor goes, the more components you can cram into it, the more energy efficient it becomes. So uh, a lower number in nanometers is better. Uh, as it turns out, TSMC is currently the world leader. They have a five nanometer process. In comparison, Intel uh, released uh, just at the end of last year their 12th generation uh, desktop microprocessors, and those microprocessors use a 10 nanometer node. 
Now, Intel also announced that by the end of this year, they're going to release their 13th generation of processors, which will also use the 10 nanometer node. Now, historically, Intel was kind of a pioneer in this lithography thing. They make their own chips, blah, blah, blah. And so it's like, right, they've actually kind of fallen behind TSMC. TSMC is like way ahead. And in fact, Intel is apparently working with TSMC to perfect a, a three nanometer node for the, the future, probably several years down the road. Um, but this just kind of gives you an idea that TSMC is like a very big company in the chip making business uh, and they're very important. In fact, um, you've probably heard of Apple's A14 and especially their M1 and their new M2 processors. Um, these processors are actually made on TSMC's 5 nanometer node. So, right, it's designed by Apple, but all the chips are actually, actually constructed uh, in, uh, mostly in Taiwan by TSMC. So without TSMC, you don't have an iPhone, you don't have your new MacBook Air, you're kind of screwed. So this kind of gives you an idea as to why TSMC is kind of important. But wait, there's more. It turns out that TSMC makes about 65% of the entire world's chips, right? Uh, in addition to that, they have 17 fabs. A fab is an actual plant where they fabricate uh, microchips, right? TSMC has 17 fabs and 14 of them are located in Taiwan. Now, um, two of them, I believe, are located in China, and the last one is, uh, I can't remember the name, I think it starts with a W or whatever. It's an American company, I think it was formerly an American company or something, and then now it's a wholly owned subsidiary of TSMC. So there's one TSMC fab in the United States, but 14 of the 17 are located actually physically in Taiwan. And TSMC itself as a company is 75% owned by foreign investors. So there's one, it's some kind of like investment bank or something where they have this big fund. And of course, you know, you have like, you know, like retirement plans work with this, this investment fund and, you know, they own like a giant chunk of TSMC. So uh, in the West, we're basically heavily invested in TSMC. So um, <clears throat> you can kind of see where the problem comes in here because no doubt you've heard in the news recently that, you know, China, China, China. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to set aside any preconceived political notions that we have and we're just going to look at purely technically and economically what would happen if China went in and said, okay, no, Taiwan is now officially ours, nobody argue, done. Well, basically... Um, Pretty much you, if, if, if China decided to do essentially what uh, the rest of us have been doing with, you know, the whole Russia thing happened and blah, 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 and sanctions, and I'm going to take your resources, I'm going to take yours, you know, no, 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 that company doesn't own to you anymore, we're taking it over and, and making it state-run and all this kind of stuff. Uh, we've kind of, you know, set the example, so if China decides to do that, then they're going to go in and they're going to say, well, TSMC is ours, and 14 of those 17 fabs, they're ours too, the, the whole thing is ours. Uh, not only do you lose 65% uh, of the world's chip supply, um, not only do you potentially lose investment profits if 75% is owned by foreign investors and suddenly China says, well, no, it's ours. Um, well, there goes your retirement plan. Uh, not only all that, but China basically becomes like the world's number one tech heavyweight, like, just like that. So yeah, that's why it's kind of important to talk about this. Uh, now, I'm not telling you this to make you freak out and, like, run screaming down the road, pulling your hair out, screaming like, you know, the commies are coming. Like, no, that's not the point. The point is that uh, in recent times we've seen, you know, high fuel prices. We've seen, you know, it's like uh, Germany is an economic powerhouse, a manufacturing powerhouse in Europe, and they can't manufacture anything without gas from, guess where, Russia, right? Um, and this is all because of globalization, which we're told is this wonderful thing. And so for decades now, it's all, it's been about all globalization, right? So when you buy an iPhone, uh, the chip in it is maybe designed in California, but uh, the chip itself that powers it is made in Taiwan. And most of the other chips that are in it are made not in the United States. And the actual device itself is fabricated, you know, historically at places like Foxconn. China. Um, pretty much everything you own is made in China. Uh, the energy to make all those things comes from some other country very often and blah blah blah. 
everything is interconnected. So you can't just go like, well, politically, I'm really upset with this group. So, you know, sanction, 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 cut this off. In fact, the, 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 it was like the, the World Bank and two other, you know, international banking associations just came out uh, recently and said, you know, we're going to have to stop these like trade restrictions because we have to worry about like, you know, high food prices, lack of food and lack of fuel. And it's like, yeah, you think? Because you can't, it's like globalization, 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 it's a wonderful thing. And then one day everybody wakes up and goes, no, that's not good. We're all going to just do everything on our own. Well, you can't. You, you end up with nothing. You, you forget about not having an iPhone. You, <laughs> it's a, and anyway, um, more likely than not, I mean, more China to go in and say Taiwan is now ours. TSMC is now, we own it. It's ours, right? Um, they're not dumb, right? The Chinese like to make money. So, um, yes, there is room for problems there, but if they have arguably one of the world's most powerful uh, tech manufacturing companies, they're not just going to shut it down and go, no, we're keeping them all to ourselves. They're going to continue selling them to everybody because they want to make money. So um, this is definitely kind of a, uh, an issue to keep an eye on. Uh, we'll see how things go. Uh, but hopefully cooler heads will prevail. TSMC, the biggest, most powerful tech company that nobody's talking about. Uh, for more techie tips, as usual, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.